All right, so calling a data center, there's uh, three kind of main components to this. There's the chillers, which are exterior mounted units uh, used to dissipate the heat. The CRAC or CRAH units, these are chilled water air handling units, and they take the water from the chillers and use it to cool the interior air inside the building. And then there's all the associated equipment. So you've got pipe work, buffer vessels, uh, filters, UV sterilizing, district heating, and lots of other just ancillaries that keep the system clean, keep it running well. The philosophy inside the halls is that the CRAH units pump cold air under a false floor and bring it up through alternating aisles and this is then fed into the servers and then out into the room and sucked in through the top uh, following the heat rises it's just a bit more efficient but they've what they found is that if you introduce kind of segregated aisles so you have a hot aisle and cold aisle containment it reduces kind of dead air space and prevents uh, recirculation of, of air that hasn't gone through a server or that's just kind of hanging around they found this is overall just a more efficient use of the power. So typically you'll see, especially in modern data centers today, you'll see containment both from the floor and possibly from the ceiling as well. It's worth noting that HVAC in admin areas and generally in the building is done separately and they'll have separate air handling units for this. This is just to focus on cooling these server units and not for any other purpose. All right, looking at the power supply, the name of the game with the power supply is generally redundancy and there'll always be uh, generators and they operate on an n plus one philosophy so there'll always be one more generator or possibly two then you'd need to run the equipment there um how it's set up on this drawing is the generators at the bottom and then there's a, a host of mv cabling switch gear the different color lines just indicate that it's running to different um switchboards in this case the switchboard is sometimes called the rmu it, which is a ring main unit it depends upon the setup of the building but um, you may find that it's done in switchboards or as an actual ring around the whole building, which power can be tapped off of. So you then get to your switchboard with it, where the generators um, join the kind of substation supply. So it's, and there'll be the ring main unit be able to switch over from either the, the substation supply or if there's an interruption, it'll switch over to the generators. Uh, from this ring main unit, we then have incoming power into transformers. Uh, these transformers are able to select from if we go back to the previous example, they're either able to select from this switchboard, which is on floor two, and the next one along that's cut off here will be on floor four. But there'll also be a switchboard on floor one, three, and five. And this really just kind of, again, for the redundancy, allows them to, if, if there's a failure within the system, it allows them to keep running regardless of what's kind of happening within the system. MV transformers then go into UPSs, and there's a separate UPS for the servers themselves and for the mechanical plant that keeps them running. And then in this case, two data halls were sharing each of the each of the four systems they had, again, just for redundancy. So if there's a problem anywhere, they're able to um, mitigate it and keep things running. Uh, power, LV power, which is typically 400 volts, will run through a PDU, which is able to monitor all the power going to the racks. And the racks will be powered from a bus bar style delivery system when they just have takeoffs, similar to what's pictured in the drawing there.